When I wanted to film this video earlier on, we had the sea fog roll in. Something that did not happen all summer and I thought, ooh, this is going to be so mystical and magical. But <laughs> it was a little bit too much. The camera couldn't even see anything. So now it's cleared up. We've got blue skies again. And I get to share something with you that has not happened on the patio before. I get a lot of pleasure out of it. I sincerely hope that you will enjoy this video as well. Welcome to the patio. It is fall of 2023. Stranger things have happened on this patio in 2023 and some things have been a little bit unusual to say the least. Anyway, as is with the orchid hobby, <laughs> you live and learn, you watch, you observe, you marvel, you ponder and you wonder why do orchids do what they do, but who cares when they are in bloom? Ah. Anyway, why am I so enchanted by what I see here? Well, this little miniature dendrobium row has never been in bloom together at the same time. So let me introduce to you our candidates for today. To the right, you've got Dendrobium exile. In the middle, you've got Dendrobium serratolabium, known on the patio as Sharky. <laughs> and then to the left is Her Regal Royal Highness, Her Majesty Dendrobium Victoria Regina. Now, from right to left, let's start with Dendrobium exile because Dendrobium exile usually does have two flushes of bloom, but not this late in the season. So I'm observing if this orchid has different kinds of rhythms depending on weather because my summer was relatively mild and very, very humid. She has put on some astounding growth and her first flush of blooms was approximately six weeks ago. The blooms don't last very long, so unfortunately we don't really see this massive blooming of tiny, tiny little white flowers. I mean, on some images and the footage you might see my nails compared to the size of the blooms. They are just magical and very, very precious. And I'm hoping that maybe one day this orchid will mature to a point where the blooms are more obvious and don't look so tucked away. They are highly fragrant, but you have to be up close. You really have to stick your nose in the bloom to get the fragrance. So when I say highly fragrant, yet I have to get close to the orchid. It kind of sounds like an oxymoron, but it's not because once you inhale the perfume, it's, it's very, very strong. They don't throw their fragrance out. It's like they want to attract the pollinators to the bloom. Thankfully, I have not had a pollinator touch any of the axilla blooms because being so short-lived, I don't need a pollinator taking them out even sooner. Speaking of short-lived, maybe six, seven days, and that is why I'm filming today. The other two dendrobiums still have buds on them, but if I waited for them to open fully, I think we wouldn't be seeing exile in bloom. And this is the reason for the video I wanted to show you. My dendrobium row, all in bloom, all at once. Needless to say, I absolutely adore the growth habit of the Dendrobium exili, and I was struggling a little bit when she first arrived in the collection, whether I was seeing her preferring to grow upright, so I potted her up, and then things started to go all over the place, so I thought, I'm going to mount you and see what happens. We are still with all over the place, but considering the all over the place from a pot as opposed to a mount, I much prefer the mounted option for this orchid. She is doing really well, and I'm super duper pleased. So in the middle, piggy in the middle, is Sharky. Sharky is a Dendrobium serratolabium. Serratolabium translating as serrated lip and for that reason Sharky. This is serratolabium's third blooming. I missed the opportunity to document fully the second blooming but this orchid has been through a lot in 2023 so I thought we were not going to have any blooms at all and then I was on the lookout for stress blooms because she lost a lot of her root system. She was sawn off a community mount and has her own independent dig now. <laughs> so in order to protect her health and her strength, I wasn't expecting blooms and I was going to nip any potential blooming in the bud, but this orchid grew a new growth, which is absolutely stunning. There's a new branch as well, which is now coming onto its own because the new growth 
is growing roots and replacing the destroyed previous root system, which was still active, but I only carried over about 30-40% of the old root system after sawing the orchid off the other mount. So she had to reset herself and she has bounced back with a vengeance, which I welcome. That is why I let her bloom out on the first blooming because the roots were already attaching to the new mount and she was hydrating really well. The second blooming as well, it was glorious. And then here we are with the third blooming, which is also very, very abundant. The color of the blooms is a little bit more on the pale yellow side than what I'm normally used to, but oh my goodness, I couldn't be more happy with the progress and the development and recovery of this orchid after going through so much trauma. Another orchid that is blooming for us for the third time within the same calendar year, 2023, that is the Dendrobium Victoria Regina. She has always had her independent mount and what you see there with the moss, that is her original mount. Recently, she got a new dig as well, a larger dig. Let's hope that now the roots don't get cut off at the base of the mount and that they can grow to the new cork that she just recently got wired to. That's all I did. I just wired the older mount and put it on the new mount. So this orchid has been growing from strength to strength since she arrived in my collection in 2018. And in order for this orchid not to have any setback and just, you know, chug along, grow along, no difference from one day to the next. I did not take her off the old mount. And that being said, we have the third blooming of this Victoria Regina. So the first bloom has opened, but I've got buds everywhere. She's pretty loaded. And one new cane that is now matured is coming into bloom for the first time possibly two new canes. I'm gonna have to see if that little crack in that cane is actually going to manifest itself and produce buds eventually blooms. What I found new this year as well is that Dendrobium Victoria Regina will branch <laughs> on older canes and produce a new cane, a new growth, so to speak. I have not seen that happen in all the years that I've had this orchid, so this is wonderful. From one, we get two. Now, if you see a lone little cane at the top of the mount, that was a keiki that I took off right when I initially mounted her onto her original mount, and that one's been growing very, very tentatively and slowly. This orchid, while she is very slow to get out of the gates, once she is established, I would say we have a weed on our hands. And of course, this time of year, it is perfect for this orchid. Her conditions are ideal. So all her canes that have started growing are continuing to grow much faster than they do during the summer. She has a new growth at the base. I am watching every day if the roots that are growing new will reach the cork underneath. That is the aim of the game. And because she's a little bit slow on opening her blooms, I wanted to show you all three of them together. I really wanted to document this because I am not entirely sure that this is going to happen year in, year out. <laughs> like I said, it's a first and I absolutely thoroughly enjoy this little visual and I hope that you did too. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions about any of these orchids or if you have any questions about mounting orchids when you see something like a scrubby pad, for example. What is that all about? Let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. I hope that you enjoyed seeing the three of them in bloom as much as I do when I walk past them, water them, care for them, and just admire them. <laughs> Thank you so very much for watching. If you would be so kind before you leave the video to give this video a like, and if you have not subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. The two buttons are very close to each other, so if it's not asking too much, would you just tap both of them? Thank you. I wish you a beautiful day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.